Ciao from Pietro. Ciao from the Limited Edition. We are live from the UK for another session of our independence broadcast. The tiny little nice broadcast where we uh, portray and we describe and we illustrate the work of some incredible artisan watchmakers. One of them being GOS. And GOS today is presenting this beautiful version of the Sarek. Actually a brand new version of the Sarek watch. One of the most known timepieces from the Swedish uh, watchmaker. And this one is called the Frost, the Sarek Frost. Today is no exception to what we normally do on this channel. We will share and we will present you and we will bring uh, on the screen the actually artisan watchmaker that makes these uh, beautiful timepieces. From Sweden, we will have uh, Patrick Ziogren uh, live with us. Of course, as every single time, and I have to say thank you for the love you've been giving us to us. Uh, we can't believe we are uh, nearly rounding 17,000 subscribers when we started this channel in February, uh, pretty much. So we do appreciate it. We don't take it for granted. And we try and strive to bring interesting, intelligent uh, content week in, week out. I couldn't do this on my own, definitely, because the mastermind behind all our broadcasts is Mr. Johnny from Northern Ireland, from Newry, our editor, the editor of the limited edition and fiercely independent mind that is obviously known for his involvement with the Festival of Time and actually the creation, the conception of the Festival of Time in Ireland, the best showcase of independent watchmaking in uh, modern days. Uh, Johnny, it's a pleasure to have you again for another broadcast. Pietro, uh, ciao my friend. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, lovely introduction. Uh, uh, thank you for reading it. I wrote that out for you especially this morning. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, But uh, much appreciated. And uh, yeah, fantastic to do uh, another episode. As you said, it's amazing to see the growth of the channel. And uh, as we started off with our first interview this year was with a gentleman called Patrick Shugwin and uh, in the, on the 1st of February. Back though, uh, then we had 400 subscribers to our channel. And as you say, we are now nudging 17,000. So it is uh, amazing. I don't know. It's, hum it's humbling. Me, Pietro. They're certainly not <laughs> coming for me. So it, it must be your uh, Mediterranean good looks and your, uh, your, your oh, nice oh. nature. Probably much more likely the quality of the people that we bring on board and our audience is really interested to hear from the voices and the faces of the uh, uh, the protagonists of uh, this incredible form of art that is really indeed our passion, which is independent watchmaking. Sure. And today, Patrick is one of the loveliest gentlemen you'll ever, you'll ever meet on a personal level, who was introduced uh, to me by a common friend, Liam. I remember Patrick over 10 years ago, I think, uh, at an independent yeah. watchmaking uh, showcase in London in Mayfair. And uh, we've been uh, we've been friends. We became friends instantly, I, I, I have to say. And, uh, and we go back a long time. It's a pleasure to have you here, Patrick. Thank you very much. And thanks for the introduction earlier. So nice it's to a... see you both again, Johnny and Pietro. It's been a couple of months since the event in Waterford. Yeah, it was a fantastic, uh, a wonderful event. We're looking at hopefully having it again uh, in 2024. We did iron out a few little uh, details, and uh, but it, 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 it's an event which has uh, attracted uh, some very, very positive feedback, and uh, it's. Uh, a pleasure to finally be able to do something that that creates stimulates an awareness of independent watchmaking here in my home country uh in ireland and uh, so hopefully there is uh many more years of doing that and uh going ahead and we were very uh, also privileged to get a, a a preview of the watch that we are going to be focusing on today which is the the new Sarek Frost, uh, which is available in ice blue, a 50 piece limited edition in ice blue, and a 50 piece edition in midnight blue. So we will be looking at that. So today has been the day, Patrick, that we have uh, been big uh, day, big day today for, uh, to see the, it. The, and, uh, the big, is, big launch day, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's a, a beautiful piece. It's a very, it, it, it has a lot of. GOS DNA 
baked into it. Even, it. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I, I, I feel that even though it's very limited uh, on, on Damascus steel, it's uh, it still express very much what, what uh, I want to put in into the GOS brand. And uh, it, also very much inspired from, from my own childhood, uh, as we can talk about later. I was going to say, it's uh, definitely, we were talking about the festival of time. People like Patrick, you won't see often out there. So it's a real privilege to have him on today. Uh, also because the, the watches, the timepieces that Patrick produces are not mass produced. You can't find them in, uh, you know, in the stores around the world. It's a work of patience and dedication and passion that brings uh, Patrick uh, as a growing business today to launch the first edition of 100 pieces. So 50 and 50 of these two, edi two editions that you see. But Patrick, uh, 50 and 50 is nothing in the grand scheme of things in terms of a, uh, of a volume of production. So you, everything still is all around artisan work. And the word artisan yeah plays still a huge, huge role in whatever you work on. Definitely. Uh, even though th the the dials are all my design, all my, my concept, but they are these dials are the first ones that are not actually manufactured in the GUS workshop. But I do a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of things in, uh, on, the, on the case. I do all the finishing of the case. I also do the the finishing uh, of, of the Damascus buckle, as you see here. So uh, every watch, Cyrus Frost watch, will be individually made here in the workshop. In Sweden, in Sweden. And there's yeah. A, yeah. in your story and in the brand story, there's a lot of Scandinavian Swedish uh, uh, DNA in many ways. Is the inspiration uh, and the... And the, um, and the and the legacy that you would say are the two biggest parts in uh, in uh, in yeah in your work yeah, related to um, sweden of course related to sweden yeah uh, of course we one one cornerstone of gos is is of course uh, damascus steel pa pattern welded steel so that that's that's a big part of of gos um and um and that has a steel making has a long history in sweden it's, mm -hmm. it is and, and Vikings, as we, we spoke about last time, they, they were one of the first cultures to, to use um, pattern welded steel in, in their swords. Uh, so so it's go, it goes way back. But we, we are using it for, for aesthetical purposes. <laughs> no. Not, Which, not to, to, to do any weapons. Aesthetical purposes, Johnny, that uh, take an awful amount of uh, work and research and development at artisanal, yeah. artisanal level. Uh, and uh, Johnny, since the creation of the Sarek in 2016, we've seen many applications of these uh, uh, skills uh, coming from the ancestral Viking or Swedish Scandinavian tradition. Really, there have been a lot of uh, brands that have released watches that have uh, featured Damascus steel, but really, yeah. uh, GOS was, for me, the brand that really uh, set the benchmark, uh, pioneering in the use of that, when nobody else uh, that I am aware of was was working with, with the material. It is a notoriously difficult uh, material to work with because I think it's uh, often, even in, in one single dial, there was 192 different layers of steel forged, hammered, beaten together uh, to create this, these watches. And then uh, Patrick would take those uh, dials and finish them, with, uh, applying color, I'm sure using acids and different things to extract the, the natural uh, uh, patterns that came out of. And you could never predict what it would look like until you were pretty much well into the, into the process. And, uh, and also, you, as I say, GOS really established itself with these uh, remarkable uh, Damascus steel. And there are still, as you say, a lot of Damascus steel elements uh, available because as every watch is individually manufactured, you can order a Damascus steel uh, bezel. I don't know, can you order Damascus steel case? I'm not sure. or uh... not, not for the frost. Not uh, it's, it's not planned uh, as for now, 
at least. For the frost, yeah. it will be the bezel only, or the dials. I, I will, once I have now introduced the, the Sarek frost, I will uh, reintroduce some of the prior Sarek uh, models, but with a new specification. Okay. Uh, so you will see, um, uh, I will use this case and the movement and the hands for, for uh, Damascus steel uh, dial versions of Sarex as well. As we see the product now, could you pinpoint the main uh, features that uh, have been developed for the Frost compared to the previous Sarex? Well, well, one main element is, is the case, actually. Two years ago, I took uh, a big decision to not continue or, or order new new parts for the existing Sarek uh, collection, but to improve everything, just about everything. So together with, with a Swiss watch designer, uh, I improved or worked on every line, every surface of the case. So that's that's an, an important improvement. But and uh, at the same time, I had the idea of of using uh, frost frosting on on, uh, on windows as inspiration for for the dial and uh, dial elements. <laughs> and what you see here on the dial, the the dots, they are actually a, a random pattern that I uh, designed to mimic how frost builds up on on a on a window and it's, it's must, printed into, yeah. out of long days in the swedish winter staring out yeah. of, uh, of the window as a as a as a child as a youngster when there was no social media exactly. no <laughs> I, I can see that. i can see we, we no, have that in no Milan. social media yeah and uh and i i grew up in in a, in a, in a in a cottage in in the forest uh, west of stockholm and that's that uh, the windows on that cottage were old style with, with a secondary window that was put in place during winter and the construction of course it helped to insulate somewhat but it also created a lot of uh, surfaces for frost to build up and every morning there was a new piece of art <laughs> on, on the window and that that Beautiful. really caught my my attention and i said some was something i recalled when i uh what started to work on, on the theme so there's Do you like frost the, print the, yeah sorry no no carry on sorry yeah. so there's frost print on the dial and it's printed in two two colors and i i believe i'm the first to do a print in in uh, transparent lacquer so the okay. the prints is both transparent and in uh, a second pattern is in uh, silver white and the GOS logo is also in transparent. So the print is done in, in glossy lacquer uh, to give the ice, the impression of ice. And this on, is very good a, as a phase of the manufacturing of the dial, yeah? Mm. And I, I think that hasn't been done before. And then here's a close-up of something else that hasn't been done before, in at least as far as I know. Um, time reading here is, is, is inverted. That's pr probably not new, but the way it's done with the sapphire indexes uh, is new, but also a yeah, the hour markers in, in this case. Yeah. Yeah. The hour markers are, are actually the spaces yeah. between the indexes. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the indexes are made from three parts, a, a base in metal and then um parts of sapphire that it they look simple but that's <laughs> they are deceivingly simple uh, they are actually very complex to manufacture so it it took me two years from original idea to actually have these dials now uh, the first production quality dials it, it's very so it's often been, the way I'm so, yeah. sorry, it's so often the way that uh, to achieve something that looks simple is actually yeah. very laborious and very uh, uh, intensive to, to the processes behind uh, achieving that. And uh, yeah. and it's not just, Patrick, just the, uh, the, as you say, the sapphire, the metal uh, insert, the, the sapphire, there's also uh, 
there's uh you, you've worked with RC Triton too for uh for to achieve a luminous effect. Yes. Um both both the the use of transparent material and and uh the luminous effect is something that I, I took a step further from the Northern Lights collection. So uh, for that one, I, back, I used, can actually take uh, a look at the Northern Lights here. The, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. To yeah. Just show the evolution. Yeah. So, so this the, is, yeah. For the Northern it's Lights. Again. I, it's, I, it's so organic. Uh, obviously, yeah. in the Northern Lights, you can picture yeah. exactly where you're going, you know, with those waves in his magic guilloche pattern but at the same time in yeah. the frost in the frost john if you can go back to the detail sure. we were looking at before if you look at the sun ray pattern of the brushing mm -hmm. of the dial if you look at the light that seems to uh, to come from the center of the dial and then the frost that poses itself on the windows if we imagine those uh, minute markers being the windows themselves it's really really visually very uh, very clear and stunning Thank you. For sure. Yeah. So it's it, uh, and um, having having worked with glass rings and and applying them to a dial, I realized that this this will be difficult. So I, I also quite early on realized I needed to to find someone to collaborate with to making to make something like this with very fine but exact details. So the I found a, a dial manufacturer in Switzerland who I'm working on for, for these dials. And it's it's actually uh one of the original friends of MBNF, Denis Parel and his, his new company, Kadrek, who has uh worked with me uh, on this and but he has hasn't done everything himself. So but he has of course a very, very good network of experts. So it's it's um uh, an additional three suppliers that have uh, provided all their expertise to make these these dials possible. They truly are a gem yeah. within the gem, aren't they? With the sun ray finish, the gloss yeah. transparent wire hose, the sapphire crystal, of course, being a track, and the super luminova, Johnny, that uh, you were going to show us, and I, I uh, uh, rudely interrupted you, uh, that we can probably have a look at uh, to have the final night effect that you created as well for the for the um, uh, Norsk and right. Northern Lights as well. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's uh, do you, what we're talking about there, like you know, the the the, the dial finishings. You you may have outsourced the, outsourced the production of the the dial, but it's very, it's still very much uh, GOS and GOS. Of course, of really course. Look, there's nothing else that really look like a GOS, and I, I often marvel at the ability to establish an identity which is so unique within the confines of a, what 41.5 millimeter uh, watch case and um, to, to, to have that strong uh, presence that is instantly recognizable as GOS. And uh, but I think it looks, uh, the frost effect looks absolutely beautiful. There is something very uh, Scandinavian about it. it. It does conjure up uh, feelings or identifies with, with, with the cold, uh, crisp, clear Scandinavian frost. And uh, it looks beautiful, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that because that's that's the second leg, leg sort of, uh, of GOS. The, the mask steel is, is one, and then the inspiration from, from Swedish history and, and nature is another very, very important aspect. And um, I'm so glad to get that kind of feedback when, when I've, I've poured a lot of myself <laughs> and, and uh, all the inspiration I've had uh, into the watch. You just answered my next question, <laughs> Patrick, which was uh, you come across as a very, uh, you know, uh, um, reserved, um, composed, uh, elegant, uh, calm gentleman. And you take your time to do things right rather than rushing into things. 
And is that what you would define as a Swedish approach to things, or is that's uh, just Patrick and the way you want to do things? I, I I'm not sure if if that's a typically Swedish thing, but maybe we are. We, I think we can say that Swedes are quite thorough uh, when, when we do stuff. Uh, yes. But it's it's also on a, on a personal level, and um, I I I I I think of myself sort of as as a, a watchmaker artist almost uh, because I, I I get a vision of of what I want to see in something, and then I find ways to express myself. And and in this case, I realized I, I really could not manufacture all all the parts myself. So I found the best people to work with, to to reach my goal uh, with this model. I think increasingly that is becoming uh, much much more. Uh, whether it, it has always been common, but it's been people. There's a lot more transparency about the process. Yes. Uh, behind uh, independent watchmaking now, and people who are artisans who specialize in a particular uh, skill, uh, whether it's finishing or decorating, people that were like someone like we had on last week, Pietro uh, Simon, who has uh, gathered around him a creative hub of excellence, all of whom are individuals who specialize in different. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, skill sets to do with the uh, watchmaking that bring uh, that empower the uh, the watchmaker, the brand owner, with, uh, and allow them to, to, to bring forward these wonderful ideas and uh, and to realize visions that you have yourself, Patrick, mm -hmm. and say, right, well, I know we can do this. So I think it is fantastic uh, to see a the collective. Uh, creativity and plus the the recognition and the the transparency that uh, I, I, and so the people who are collecting mm. people who are buying know what they're buying. There's no or, or much less, as we say, smoke and mirrors in uh, mm. particularly in the artisan independent yeah. watchmaking. Uh, and we'll talk about the also the price that you set for this uh, new uh, new edition of the Sarek. But you briefly yeah. talked about the case, Patrick, and the number of finishes as well that you managed to combine in the case. And that will bring us to talk about the movement as well. Uh, but can you talk yeah. us through the case, um, the you know the um, how you have reworked the lugs, uh, how you have reworked the side, the crown, etc. Well. From the original Sara case, I felt that the, the crowns, uh, the lugs were a, a bit um, weak. I wanted to get a stronger expression uh, from the lugs. Uh, and, and the solution to this was partly to, to shorten them, uh, to remove, move, remove the tip, but also to make them, them wider. Here you can see the... The tip has been sort of cut off, but in a very, it's difficult to explain how long this, this, improve, this improvement took. We, we actually, I, like I said, I worked together for almost 10 years. I, I've been um, collaborating with, with a Swiss designer who has helped me to fine tune some, some details. So even though I I I or I do um, like I'm the creator, but I always consult Jacques in in Neuchâtel for uh, for advice, and uh, so it's been really back and forth for almost half a year to to improve uh, every line of yeah. of the case. Wow. But then I, I've also worked a lot. On the finishing of the case, so uh, every every surface is is finished by me in 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 the GOS workshop, and I wanted to express frost feeling on the case as well. So what you see on the top of the bezel and the glass ring is a very finely satinized surface. It's still reflective, but it's it's quite far from the circular 
circular uh, brushing you can see on sports watches. This is a, a lot finer and takes uh, takes longer to to get to this point. Uh, so How do you do that? Time to develop. I do it by hand. I I I, I and uh, I use. I use my watchmaker's lathe for a lot more than ma manufacturing parts. <laughs> I also use it for finishing, actually. Uh, wow. But and the lugs are, are made, uh, the finishing on the top of the lugs are, are made by hand on, on uh, tools on, on, my, on the finishing workbench. Uh, the finishing on the side of the case is also rather special. Uh, yes. I wanted to make sure the that the um, uh, what do you call them the elliptic grooves, the flutes, fluting yes. on the case were more visible. So they are still high gloss polished, while the rest of the surface receives a similar uh, satin finish uh, as the top of the bezel. Yeah, this photo is good to show that. Um, the crown fish finishing is also rather special. It, it actually employs four different finishing techniques. The inside of the crown is high gloss polished. The top surfaces are straight brushed. The lower sections of, of uh, the crown grooves are bead blasted while the Wow. Uh, bevels. The bevels are pressure polished to both improve uh, ergonomics, but also give more highlights. You can see a highlight here in this photo. For sure. So, so how long would it take you, Patrick, to uh, working on a crown, for example, to, to put those, what, four processes, I, I think, that you've mentioned? Well, I, I'm, that's difficult to measure because I, I don't do all four steps on a single crown at a time. I make maybe 10, 10 crowns. Yeah, okay. Uh, so um, I do the straight brushing for for five crowns, and then, then I switch to a different finishing technique and then do f five crowns with the polishing of, of the bevels. But th that's probably, that's what takes the most of the time to, to do the pressure polishing of the angles. Okay, but again, it's attention to detail that makes GOS, uh, you know, st stand out in that way. And um, so, when you think about it, Pietro, the Absolutely. amount I was, of, I was, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, the amount of work that goes into these uh, watches, uh, Pietro. Totally. You know? that, that's why I wanted Patrick to take a moment because. We sometimes take certain things for for granted, uh, but uh, I think it's 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 really, really definitely better to really spend some time and understand in details, uh, because in this case it's all about the details, and uh, they yeah. look like no other case. So you know, I think it's it's, it's fair to kind of uh, ask yourself, uh, how did you think about it? What was the inspiration? How did you actually? carried out same thing then when we flip now the the case and to see the last bit that we haven't seen yet on the yeah. case back we can see that yes there is a collaboration with an important uh, manufacturer but again here you have worked on a set of other finishing that uh, regard yeah. the bezel of the case back as well as the rotor and the movement itself yeah the rotor is is uh my design regarding the the skeletonization the it's it's the whole rotor is made from one piece of tungsten and this this is another instance of me realizing that i did not have the tooling to work with tungsten myself so i i did all the designs in this case uh in this uh rotor including the um, tree and, and then you had to find the tools <laughs> And then I had to find the tools. And in this, <laughs> this case, I actually found uh, someone who is a neighbor of uh, manufacturer La Jopere, who made uh, the skeletonizing, uh, skeletonization for me. And it, it also took a big, bit of back and forth because I, I, was, I insisted on having uh, the chamfer uh, on the skeletonization. I and I see, which, which I can is, see, uh, sorry. Yeah. No, continue, please. 
you sprinkled some more frost on the back to create this yes. uh, bezel. Uh, I say sprinkle, but obviously it doesn't quite work like that. This must have taken ages as well. Yeah, it took took quite a, quite some time to uh, to um, convert. It's the the frost pattern I developed for the dial. Is is actually the basis for this frost pattern as well. Um, but it took some time to convert it so it so that it was possible to to engrave like this. How do so you engrave see, something like that, uh, Patrick? There's so many of those little uh, grains yeah. of, of frost. You tell me that, that each one, each case is engraved. Each rear bezel is engraved. It, yeah, it, it's it's fortunately it's not done by hand. Although I have I have uh, I collaborate with one of the best engravers in Sweden, and he could probably do it, but it would be insanely expensive. Yes. But what what that, I that, did it, uh, in, <laughs> instead was was to to use a new piece of equipment that I purchased uh, a laser engraver, and I learned how to how to use it to the maximum. So to speak. Fantastic. Because, so this, uh, yeah. So it it took some time to to first of all uh, convert the pattern in, into be uh, to be engraved instead of printed, and then uh, learn or configure the 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 machine to do what I wanted it to do. So there was a lot of. Uh, Is it one of those where you have to work on the negative image in order yeah, to get the pattern yes. you want? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then the uh, the final step was was to to do the finishing to make the the text and the frost stand out and have have the ref reflective uh, properties. Those are really difficult to capture in a single photo. Yeah, but you Here you, you can, really achieve. You really achieve. It's, it's yeah. really job yeah. done and very well achieved because you can tell straight away that that's the frost and that's a reminder of what we can see clearly on the dial as well. Uh, yeah, incredible, you. incredible job. And and Patrick, one of your missions as well, we were discussing a bit in uh, in Ireland at the festival of time, uh, was to keep the, the prize within what you would define as reasonable given the amount of value that you have managed to give here and but to keep the prize under the $10,000. Yes, and, and uh, I managed to do that. Uh, yeah, great because this version, the version without the uh, the Damascus steel basil, is retailed at nine thousand five hundred dollars, fifty pieces per dial, or is it a variable number of pieces uh, per dial given the hundred pieces total? Um, I I uh, I will be able to make a handful of more of each color if one is more popular and currently okay. I have a feeling that the ice blue will be more popular so there will be so, so it could be 60 60 ice blue and 40 oh, and midnight blue for yes, example yes yes so that's that's the variation I, I can accomplish yeah we don't have an image. I know that we don't have an image, but I'm asking Patrick if we would Patrick, possibly be able to see soon the the, bez the, the Damascus steel bezel uh, version as well, which will be retailed at ten thousand five hundred US dollars, so one thousand mm. dollars more than the uh, regular steel bezel. Mm. Um, yes, may maybe we can take take a photo from. Uh, uh, that would be very similar to to the bezel I made for uh, Sarek uh, Glacier. Yeah, that's that's another watch where I played with uh, luminous effects with with a um, with a glowing mother of pearl. Yes, that's four or five years ago. But I I will see if I can. I don't have any readily made bezels. Uh, in Damascus steel, but it it will be very close. Of course, oh, and uh, uh, if you, will, of course, it will be very close to the Damascus steel bezels you can see on on the Northern Lights, the Norskin. For example, I'm so showing that, on our yeah, on our website so, on the limited edition. Yeah, we are official oh, retailers yeah. for for GOS, so you can see the 
the full uh, the full listing of GOS yeah. timepieces. Many of them are sold out, unfortunately, but some are still uh, makeable by by GOS. So let us know in case yeah. of interest. And I, I'm hoping that Patrick will give us a possibility to give you a preview once the Frost version with the Damascus steel bezel will be ready to be shown. Yeah. We will make sure we'll be one of the first to be able to show you that, yes. uh, which yes. is absolutely perfect. Uh, here we go. So I can stop sharing my screen now. Here we sure, go. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So, Patrick, where do we go from from here? I mean, for you, it must today is it's one of those days where finally you've released the work for the last two years, but you had two years to yeah. think about what you're going to do next. And in this broadcast, uh, Johnny can confirm we always like to be a bit of a hint, to give a bit of a hint of. Uh, uh, an idea of what's coming, uh, where where you're going to go. Is there anything else that's going to come in uh, 2020? Sorry, in 2024. Maybe we'll be able to admire at the festival time uh, in uh, the next summer. Um, I will definitely uh, try to reintroduce some of, some of the previous uh, Sarek uh, models in the new specification. And I'm I'm already working on on a new uh, chaptering with a similar technique as as I introduced in, in the Sarek Frost. So so this will you will see more of this definitely. The I I, I won't leave the the transparent uh, chaptering theme. And talking anytime. about Swedish inter <clears throat> uh, uh, inspiration, Sarek is not just a random name. Of course, it's no. the name of a very, very important place in Sweden. Yeah, it's it's the name of uh, the northernmost uh, national park in Sweden, or almost northernmost. And uh, it's very close to where I spend a lot of days uh, during the year. My wife is from up north, and uh, we we use we try to be up up in the mountains as as much as we can. And Sarek is is a place we love. Um. And the name Sara came from uh, a dial we made. I uh, made with Johan Gustafsson. Uh, let's let's see, seven years ago now. Wow. And w when we saw that dial, we immediately, me and my wife, we immediately felt that this looks just like uh, a valley in Sarek, known as uh, Rapa Valley. Is that? So we felt if we can can uh, can make these these no. uh, dials, that's that's a, another watch. Um, we we should have a model named Sarek. So and uh, then it grew into a whole collection, actually. But that's that's where the name came from. And uh, love for nature and inspiration from nature is is a very big part of GOS. Fantastic, as, as well as passion for handcraft in general, as well, for sure. And John, I, I, will you be continuing with the Damascus steel dials with with the uh, Connie Peterson, who or person who is now uh, providing yes. uh, uh, th those skills? Because again, I, I, like we just saw the uh, the, the previous uh, piece there, the. Uh, we can go back to look at the Norse skin, which is still very much available, and uh, with yeah. the, uh, the, uh, the 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 fuchsia uh, dial. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and I and, I, and, I, uh, and uh, I, I can Nor make the Nor Norse watch in with a Damascus dial as well. So there's always that uh, possibility. Yeah, so I say. love the I I love the Georg pattern, but uh, it's also possible to do it in Damascus. Yeah, which that's one of is, uh, his masterpieces. <laughs> yeah, Connie is incredible, just amazing. And you can extract different colors out of out of this material as well. Is that down to the processes that you do, or is that down to the metals that are used uh, to create the? Uh, I can do two different uh, techniques. Actually, the the most common technique and the traditional technique is to use heat heat tempering and then i i can do uh, purple dark blue or ice blue wonderful but then there, i i can i can uh, actually apply the same coloring i do on the geo styles 
because I I do the coloring of all uh, Norsken Northern Light Swatches Georg styles as well, and that's yeah. nano ceramics that I apply <clears throat> in an elaborate process. But I, I can apply that to a Damascus style as well. I can't wait to see so, what's next. Uh, and I, I I can't believe yeah we we we've gone through the most of the of the time we had for today, Patrick. Thank you very much for your time and Johnny. How how uh, incredible it is to uh, to to see the development uh, of uh, of an artisan that we met a long time ago, and we can clearly see uh, the the clarity and the consistency of the direction he's taken, and uh, the non kind of non compromising as well. Uh, uh, philosophy that is bringing you know this this brand if we can call it a brand of course uh, to be uh, one of the true artisan timepieces uh, out there and definitely a gem that deserves to be discovered without a doubt for for me patrick uh, typifies what so many of us uh, e even as a layman a non watchmaker but the journey that we have to go to get to uh, uh, this level of uh, do this 100 piece edition is no small undertaking. Let me tell you, where a lot some other brands are bringing out 100 piece editions every year or maybe twice a year. For Patrick to, uh, I, I know, and, and I think that's why I identify with you uh, so strongly. And um, that we, it, it is, it is not the easy road that you take, Patrick. To the level of detail that goes into your watches, the uh, the vision that you have and been able to translate that vision into the finished article, and also to come in at a price of sub ten thousand dollars. I think we're listed on the limited edition there at um, I, I think it's eight thousand seven hundred and fifty euro plus taxes uh, is remarkable and uh, yeah seven thousand five hundred pounds yeah yeah I think that that. that Makes for me is one of the reasons why you're one of our favorites because the thank you. The, it, it's not it, where Pietro says it's all about value. Call it a brand, it's a person really, and it's so much about the human being behind it and the human beings behind uh, yeah. uh, the and, 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 and the value that is <clears throat> the value that is apparent in at all levels, uh, the intrinsic uh, orological value, the intrinsic as um, artisan and artistic value, and the intrinsic human value that is clear, Patrick, in the in, in everything you do. So congratulations you. to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Johnny, for setting this up for us again. And uh, gentlemen, pleasure. can't wait to see you uh, in the flesh very soon. Absolutely. Uh, Piet uh, Pietro, have a good week. And Patrick, wishing you the very, very best of success with uh, Sarek Frost. And uh, hopefully we will be rubbing shoulders in the next few months uh, again soon. So uh, thank you, Pietro. Take care. See you soon. Okay. Take care.